According to the Centers for Disease Control, more and more Americans are coming down with the flu. And the first place many turn for relief when we're feeling awful is to the medicine cabinet. On this week's Health Watch, we're taking a look at five common medicine cabinet mistakes that can put your health and the health of your kids at risk. WCBS TV's Dr. Holly Phillips is here with us to explain. Great to have you with us, Dr. Good morning, Phillips. Rebecca. And I mean, there's just so many components of this that can be confusing, but one of them is the antibiotics in that cabinet. Sure. When's the right time to take them? How much should you be taking? Right. Well, you know what? The main mistake people make is thinking that antibiotics can treat the common cold or the flu. Mm. Unfortunately, as much as we'd like it to be true, antibiotics just aren't effective against the cold or flu because those are viruses and antibiotics only treat bacteria. So even on a chemical basis, they're no more effective than just rest, chicken soup, and taking good care of yourself. If you are taking them and the doctor has prescribed them, is there a right time of day that they can be most useful? It really depends on the antibiotic and ask your doctor. Some are most effective if taken with food in the morning and others you might want to take later in the day. So it really depends on the antibiotic. That's important to know. Mm -hmm. Also expiration dates. I see this all the time. I go through my cabinet, I'm cleaning it out, I see expiration dates and I think should I throw this away or can it still be usable? Basically Rebecca, it is a good idea to keep your medications refreshed. If you notice that, the, that uh, it is past its, ex its expiration date, it's a good idea to go on ahead and replace it. But the truth of the matter is the vast majority of medications are not dangerous if you take them after their expiration dates. The dates are put there by the manufacturer and up until that point they guarantee that the medications are their full potency. Mm. After that, in theory, they may become weaker, but studies have shown they rarely do. Um, mm. But even that having been said, it's still a good idea to try to keep your medicines up to date. That's a good point. Mm -hmm. When it comes to splitting pills, I actually, I watch my grandparents do this all the time because sometimes they're given a pill that's just too big or else they're just trying to save a little money. Is sure. that a safe thing to do? Well, the only pills that should be split are those that are scored. Now, scored means they have that little line going down the middle, which makes them easier to cut. And they should only be cut with a proper pill cutter. Uh, actually, we have one over here. It's basically one you can get at the drugstore for just a couple of dollars. Now, that helps to ensure sure that the milligrams on either side are the same and so you're getting the right dose each time. Some pills should never be cut. Anything that says extended release, you could actually overdose by mm. cutting them because you lose that protective coating. Anything that says it is coated to protect the stomach, if you cut it you might uh, end up hurting your stomach or having adverse effects uh, and capsules also can never be split. So there are only a very few medications that are safe to split so definitely ask your doctor about it before you do it. Vitamins, I keep mine in the bathroom, is that a mistake? Just like everybody else, actually a recent study showed when you keep your vitamins in the bathroom because of the heat and humidity from the bath and the shower, many of them can actually decompose, particularly vitamin B hmm. and vitamin C. Also kitchens get very hot and humid, so it might be a good idea to keep the, the vitamins both out of the kitchen cabinet and out of the bathroom cabinet. It's actually recommended that you keep them somewhere warm and dry, just like the bedroom. Put them mm -hmm. high up in a bedroom closet um, and they should last longer. Last Lastly, cold medicine. Do you give it to your children? Do you keep it from them? What do you do? Absolutely not. The FDA has recommended no cough and cold medicines for kids under the age of five. And the reasons for that are simple. Number one, they don't work. Mm -hmm. uh, and number two, they're incredibly dangerous. Every year there were hundreds of hospitalizations from unintentional overdose uh, for kids with their cold medicines. Parents think they're giving the right dose and they're actually not. So it can be a very dangerous situation. Now I have a two-year-old mm -hmm. at home. I understand how much you want to help Right, them you want them to feel better. Anything. But really, the studies have shown just the natural remedies are best. Mm -hmm. For the cough, uh, I recommend right. uh, just a tea with honey and lemon <laughs> or boiling up some ginger can help. Dr. Holly Phillips, thank you so much. Sure. We really appreciate it. Thanks for being with us. Anytime. And for more tips to use your medication safely, go to our partner in health, newswebmd.com, and search medication errors.